hello viewers welcome to my channel uh, today's topic is vaginal cancer um, but before starting this I would like to request you uh, to subscribe this channel for more informative videos every day now first of all uh, the question is uh, uh, what is uh, vaginal cancer as you can see in this uh, picture you know so this is the normal uh, as you can see there is no abnormality here but here you can see that there are some abnormal cells here and we can zoom on this one so this here, you can see this one you know so this is the these are the cancer growths you know the only thing is what are uh, what is vaginal cancer you know you know, vaginal cancer is uh, a disease and uh, in which the malignant cells form in the vagina. As you know, this kind of tumor, so there are two types of the growths. One is the malignant growth and the other one is the uh, uh, benign growth. So malignant are the cancerous growths, you know. So in this case, the cells multiply abnormally, you know. And the, the vagina is the uh, canal leading from the cervix, which is the opening of the uterus, you know, uh, to the outside of the body. And at birth, a baby passes out of the body through the vaginal canal. And the vaginal cancer is uh, it's not uh, common, you know. And when it's found in the early stages, uh, it's often be cured. And uh, there are two main types of the cancers, vaginal cancers. Uh, number one is uh, squamous cell carcinoma. So the squamous cell carcinoma is uh, uh, the cancer that forms in the squamous cells, uh, which are the thin, uh, flat cells lining in the vagina. You know, and the squamous cell uh, vaginal cancer spreads uh, slowly and usually uh, stays near the uh, vagina. You know. Uh, but may spread to the lungs and liver as well and this is the most common type of the vaginal cancer and it's found most often in the woman whose age is 60 or the over you know and uh, the next thing is uh, uh, adenocarcinoma you know now the adenocarcinoma uh, these are the cancers that begins in the glandular cells and uh, the glandular cells in the uh, lining of the vagina make and uh, release the fluids such as the mucus, you know. And uh, uh, adenocarcinoma is more likely than uh, the squamous cell carcinoma to spread to the lungs and the lymph nodes. And uh, it is found most often in the woman uh, aged uh, 30 or younger, you know. So, uh, so the younger women are more likely to have this kind of. Uh, 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 adenocarcinomas and the next thing is what are the causes and uh, uh, the risk factors uh, age uh, exposure to certain drugs uh, HPV infection and uh, the history of the abnormal cells in the cervix uh, are the common causes and the risk factors you know now uh, the exposure to the drugs uh, DES which is uh, dithyl uh, uh, still stroll, you know, uh, before the birth affects uh, the woman's risk of developing the vaginal cancer, you know? and uh, anything that increases your risk of getting a disease is called risk factors, you know. And risk factors for the vaginal cancer include like the age. If you are you are more likely if you are uh, over 60 years of age, uh, you are being exposed to certain medications that I said earlier. And human papilloma virus infection, which is also known as HPV virus, is another common risk factor. And having the history of the abnormal cells in the cervix or the cervical cancer is another risk factor, you know. Now, the next thing is uh, what are the signs and the symptoms? So, these are the risk factors are the age, exposure to certain drugs, HPV infection, and the uh, history of the cervical cancer. The next thing is. What are the symptoms? You know, the possible signs uh, of the vaginal cancer include like uh, uh, bleeding, which is abnormal bleeding, you know. 
and uh, the Bianca cancer often does not cause early symptoms and may be found uh, during a routine, a routine pap test you know and when the symptoms uh, occur they may be caused by the vaginal cancer or by the other conditions you know and the doctor should be uh, consulted if any of the uh, symptoms uh, like uh, uh, bleeding or the discharge or pain during the sexual intercourse or the pain in the pelvic area you know or the lump feeling of a lump in the vaginal area so if you are suffering from any kind of these problems you should consult your gynecologist for further evaluation you know now the next thing is uh, uh, how do the doctors diagnose uh, the vaginal cancer well uh, the medical history physical examination pelvic examination pap smear biopsy and colonoscope uh, 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 colposcopy you know so these are the common tests you know and the test tests that uh, uh, examine the vagina and the other organs in the pelvis are used to detect and diagnose the vaginal cancer you know now during the f uh, the first thing is the physical examination or the uh, medical history you know you know an examination of the body to check the general signs of the health including the checking for the signs of any disease such as lumps or anything else that seems unusual you know and a history of the patient's health habits and the past illness and the treatments will also be taken the next thing is after the medical history and the physical examination the next step will be the pelvic examination which will be performed by the gynecologist so a pelvic examination as an exam of uh, the vagina, the cervix, the uterus, the fallopian tubes, uh, ovaries and the rectum, I mean the, all the reproductive organs, you know. And the doctor uh, inserts uh, one or two lubricated gloved fingers uh, of uh, one hand into the uh, canal, vaginal canal and places the other hand uh, over the lower abdomen and to feel the size, the shape and the position of the uterus. And the ovaries and the speculum also inserted into the vagina and the doctor or the nurse looks at the vagina and the cervix for any signs of uh, any disease you know and the pap test or the pap smear of the cervix is usually done at the same time and the doctor or the nurse also inserts a lubricated gloved finger into the rectum and to feel any lump or any abnormal areas you know so the pap smear test is uh, the other thing that will be taken at the same time and the procedure to collect the cells uh, from the surface of the cervix and the vagina you know and it can be taken during that uh, uh, pelvic exam or maybe separately you know and uh, a piece of cotton or the brush or the small wooden stick is used to gently scrap uh, the cells from the cervix and the vagina and the cells are viewed under the microscope for any changes you know it's also called the pap smear test or pap test as well the next thing is biopsy you know you know the biopsy is uh, uh, the test where a piece is taken from that uh, inside of any growth you know and just check it under the microscope the status of this growth whether it's a, uh, uh, benign or it's malignant whether it's cancerous or non-cancerous you know and the other test is uh, the uh, colposcopy uh, it's a procedure in which uh, uh, a, a colposcope, which is a, a lighted magnifying instrument, is used to check the vagina and the cervix of the abnormal areas, you know. And the tissue samples uh, may be taken uh, using a curate or the spoon shaped instrument, you know, and checked under the microscope for any signs of any disease, you know. So, these are how the doctors detect any or uh, uh, diagnose any disease you know now the next thing is uh, uh, about uh, uh, the staging you know you know after the vaginal cancer has been diagnosed uh, then the uh, tests are done to find out if the cancer cells have spread uh, within the vagina or to the other parts of the body you know and the process used to find out uh, if cancer has spread uh, within the vagina or to the other parts of the body is called staging and uh, uh, the information gathered from the staging process determines the stage of the disease and it's important to know uh, the stage in order to plan the treatment you know and the following uh, there are certain procedures that are 
performed to evaluate and stage the cancer you know and they include the biopsy you know as I explain, have explained that uh, earlier you know and uh, uh, maybe chest x-rays you find anything abnormal in the chest area you know in the lungs you know or any other part of the chest you know uh, cystoscope is another procedure which will be used you know um, like uh, uh, it's a procedure to look inside the bladder and the urethra to check any abnormal areas in that you know so if the cancer has spread to the, those parts you know then uh, ureteroscopy is a procedure to look inside the uterus uh, ureters uh, to check for the uh, like uh, any abnormal areas in the u in the ureter you know our uh, ureteroscope is inserted uh, through the bladder and into the ureters you know and the ureteroscope is a thin tube like instrument with the light and the lens for viewing you know and it also have a tool to remove the tissue to be checked under the microscope you know and the other one is the proctoscopy uh, proctoscopy is a procedure to look inside the rectum to check for any abnormal areas and uh, the CT scan is another procedure it is an imaging procedure uh, that uh, makes a series of detailed pictures of the areas inside the body uh, uh, taken from different angles you know and the pictures are uh, made by the computer linked to an x-ray machine you know and uh, a dye may be injected into the vein and uh, swallowed to help the organs or the tissues to show up more clearly you know uh, and uh, MRI is another procedure which can be used uh, to uh, for the detailed viewing, you know. And the PET scan is rather, also another procedure where a small amount of the radioactive sugar is uh, injected into the veins, you know. And the cancer cells use sugar differently than the normal cells, you know. And a series of pictures are taken uh, uh, looking for the radioactivity uh, using a, in conjunction with the CT scan to define the ex uh, like the extent of the of general cancer, you know. So it's helpful in staging. So there are four stages. You know, the number one is the zero stage. Uh, so after this evalu uh, evaluation, evaluation, you know, so then uh, the stage is determined. There's a number zero stage, one stage, two stage, three stage, and four stage. You know, now at the zero stage, uh, the squamous cell cancer is uh, found in the tissues lining the inside of the vagina. You know. <clears throat> And it's also called the carcinoma in situ, you know, so which means that it hasn't spread yet, you know, to other parts of the body. And uh, in stage one uh, is where uh, the cancer has spread from the vagina to the tissues around the vagina, you know. And uh, then in number uh, second stage, uh, And the cancer has spread from the vagina to the tissues around the vagina, you know. And the number third stage, and the cancer has uh, uh, spread uh, like uh, uh, from the vagina to the lymph nodes in the pelvis or the groins, you know, or to the pelvis or both, you know. And in the, in the number four stage is uh, where it's divided into two stages, 4A and 4B. In the stage 4A, And for B. So in 4A, the cancer may have spread to the lymph nodes in the pelvis and the groins and uh, has spread to one or the both sides of the uh, uh, like uh, lining of the bladder or the rectum or the beyond the pelvis, you know. And in uh, the stage 4B, and the cancer has spread to the parts of the body that are uh, not near to the vagina, such as the lungs. And the cancer may uh, have spread to the distinct lymph nodes, you know. So these are the stages, you know. And these are very helpful to uh, choose the right treatment option for the uh, that particular patient, you know. Now the next thing is uh, uh, once uh, treatment, you know. Well, the surgery and the radiation therapy, chemotherapy, and radio sensitizers. So these are the different treatment options, but it depends on the stage of the cancer, you know. And, uh, you know, the different types of the treatments are available, as I said earlier, and for the patients with the vaginal cancer. And some treatments are started, um, like, uh, the standard treatments, like uh, 
uh, and uh, some are being uh, tested in the clinical trials you know and before starting the treatment the patients may want to think about uh, taking part in a clinical trial and the treatment uh, clinical trial is a research study uh, meant to help improve the current treatments or obtain information on uh, new treatments for the patients with the cancer you know and when the clinical trials show that a new treatment is better than the standard treatment and the new treatment may become the standard treatment you know so the cl clinical trials are taking place in many parts of the country and the world you know the information about ongoing clinical trials is available from different websites you know and the three types of the standard treatments are mostly used they are surgery they are chemotherapy and uh, the, the radiation therapy you know the surgery is the most uh, uh, common you know uh, treatment of the vaginal cancer and the following the surgical procedure uh, may be used uh, it may be different procedures can be used for this it, might, it may be the laser surgery or maybe the uh, wide local incision you know and uh, maybe vaginectomy you know and maybe total hyper uh, hysterectomy you know and uh, maybe lymphadenectomy and uh, uh, maybe the pelvic uh, uh, eccentration, you know. So these are the different techniques, uh, the procedures which uh, depends on, on the location of the uh, that uh, uh, abnormal vaginal cancer growth, you know. And uh, but I, I will explain these uh, uh, procedures in detail in the next uh, separate videos to explain what is uh, uh, like uh, laser surgery or what is total hysterectomy or what is a lymphadenectomy you know and uh, what is a pelvic uh, acceleration you know and the next is uh, a radiation therapy now the radiation therapy is uh, uh, another treatment option you know uh, for the cancer of the vagina and uh, then uses the high energy x-rays or the other types of the radiation to kill the cancer cells and keep them from growing you know and there are two types of radiation therapy the external radiation therapy uses a machine outside of the body to send the radiation towards the cancer you know and the internal radiation therapy uses a radioactive substance uh, sealed in the needle seeds uh, wires are uh, the catheters that are placed directly into or near to the cancer and the way the radiation therapy is given depends on the type and the stage of the cancer being treated you know and the third option is the uh, chemotherapy now chemotherapy is uh, the cancer treatment that uses the drugs to stop the growth of the cancer cells either by killing the cells of the by stopping them from dividing you know and when the chemotherapy is taken by mouth or injected into the vein the drugs enter the bloodstream and can affect the cancer cells throughout the body and when the chemotherapy is uh, placed directly into the spinal fluid, you know, an organ or the body cavity such as the abdomen and the drugs mainly affect cancer cells in those areas. So it's known as a regional chemotherapy, you know. And the way the chemotherapy is given depends on the type and the stage of the cancer which is being treated. And uh, the uh, topical chemotherapy for the squamous cell of vaginal cancer may be applied to the vagina in a cream or in a lotion and there are new types of the treatment are being tested in clinical trials so these include uh, the radio sensitizer you know so this is a trial treatment you know and uh, and the radio sensitizers are the drugs that make tumors uh, more sensitive to the radiation therapy and uh, combining the radiation therapy with the radio sensitizers may kill more tumor cells it may be more effective you know so that's a uh, thank you very much for watching this video uh, if you need more information about any disease any medical condition you can visit our website www.diseasesandtreatment.com now if you need more information about any disease any medical condition you can visit our website www.diseasesandtreatment.com or uh, you can click the link in the description area thank you goodbye